now. Ten minutes I give you for questions, but questions coming just to know and not through your egotistical problems. Yes. I'm not hearing you. Could you explain the three aspects of karma? Sanjit, Kriyaman, and Yes, I'm going to. What are you? Yes. Uh, what are the practical steps to awaken Kundalini? Okay. Sanjit. Please sit down. Hmm? I, I have a hard time with the concept of the semi-immortal part. If I think of it as a personal thing, it's very hard for you to believe. Yes, I'm going to explain. Yeah. Yes, go on pouring your question. When a person is in samadhi, mm -hmm. does the mind exist? Yes, it exists like a rope which is burnt. Suppose you are tied by a rope and that rope is burnt. It exists like that. That burnt rope has no power to tie you. Yes. Um, I have two questions. One is I'm a little confused as to whether there's a difference between Brahman and Patman. Patman. I am going to explain today and you should be very attentive. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, at the state where the unconscious mind and the prana leave the soul, or the self, is that near the Kalpa Samadhi? Is that the same thing? Yes. Um, how is the human being's capacity to love related to Brahman, and why do you call love the most ancient traveler? Without the help of love, Brahman did not manifest the universe. Without the help of love, you did not meet your husband and get, got married and had children. So, love is most ancient traveler in the world. Yes. Yesterday you referred to um, uh, Bhuvi, Chita, Ahamkara as modifications of the mind. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? Various aspects of mind what we call mind, our thinking life, according to psychology, our mental life has four different main aspects or modifications. Manas, Chitta, Buddhi and Ankar. As we have four gross limbs, two hands and two legs, internal man, the man within us have four aspects. Antaha karana. Karana means one doors. Antaha means inside. The internal organs that function inside are manas, chitta, buddhi, ahankara. They are four aspects of our internal life. Yes. That there is no action that we can take that will bring liberation. What will bring liberation? Knowledge. I was comparing knowledge with liberation. Action. Again, listen. When you perform an action, you have to perform an action because you cannot help. It's a must. The law of karma is inevitable. You have to. So it's the helplessness and at the same time human being is considered to be highly evolved. He should be master of his own actions. In other kingdoms, like animal kingdom, vegetable kingdom, kingdom of rocks, it's total helplessness. They cannot do any action independently because they are governed and controlled fully by the nature. Human being alone has power of control over their actions.
Chesui karman nevirataha san siddhim lavate nara By doing your own actions efficiently, skillfully, lovingly, you can be successful in life. It's only human being has that privilege. In the cycle of the universe, when one becomes human beings, then he becomes master of his own karma. But he becomes a victim when he forgets that he is master of his own destiny or deeds. There are three types of karmas, I am answering your question, where you perform. Imagine a man with bow and arrow. The Upanishads often, with the help of this symbol, explain karmas. The bow and arrow, now we have a target there. The arrows which I have already sent, they are past karmas. The past karmas which we have already performed, we don't have control over that, those actions of ours, because they have already been conducted, performed. There, are, there is an arrow in my hand which I am going to pierce now, present time. We have control on that. We have control on the arrows which are in the reserve. So, Sanchit Karma, Aradha, and the karmas we are performing now. So two parts of the karmas, two aspects of karmas, our actions are under our control. The karmas which we are performing now, the karmas which we are going to perform in future. But there is superiority of knowledge. What do you do? Analyze all your actions, all possible actions you perform. When you perform an action, what do you do? You create, you become creative. Such as, you make table out of wood. You make pot out of clay. You see, you build a wall out of brick and mortar. One phase of karma. Another modification, you can modify clay into pot. You can modify making ornaments out of gold. Third is purification. Put gold in the fire and it shines. Okay. So creation, modification, purifications, and you can go from one place to another. You cannot do more than four things. Karma will lead you from one place to another. Karma will help you in purifying what, you, what is there. No matter how skilled karma you perform, karma will help you in modifying things such as part out of clay. But karma cannot enlighten you. That's the point. The Upanishad says, karmas should be performed, but don't think that karma will be, karma will enlighten you. No karma has power to enlighten you, otherwise we would have done those karmas. Enlightenment is entirely different. One, now do the best of the karmas, charity, donation. Those karmas are not, do not create hurdles or obstacles for you. That's why they are considered to be good karmas. As bad karma gives you fruits, the good karma also gives you fruits. Bad karma will give you 
negative results, good karma will give you positive results, means will not create obstacles for you. But karma will never enlighten you. Therefore, that which enlightens you is knowledge. And absence of knowledge will is considered to be darkness or ignorance. A human being has to perform his karma to live in the world, but the purpose of living in the world, being born, is to accomplish his goal, final goal, that is called realization of absolute truth. This is a means to live in the external world, but this is no means to attain knowledge. Therefore, knowledge is definitely higher than karma. In knowledge comes love too, bhakti too. In karma also you can include bhakti. If you are doing karma as a worship for God, now I see God in you and I am performing karma, for God in you, then that becomes worship. But how, how much this worship will lead us? This worship actually leads us to constant awareness. And by, through our action, through this worship, we are being constantly aware of the truth, then it is way of liberation. There is only one place where karma helps us. Karma performed as a worship that does not create obstacles. Such a worship makes us aware of the reality or truth and constant awareness leads us to Self-realization. Another question comes. Mundak Upanishad means Mundak means shaven head. What is the difference between householder or shaven head? The Swami or a sannyasi Niranand said. The householder performs his actions, sannyasi also performs his actions. He goes to bathroom, he eats, he walks. These karmas do not bind, I told you yesterday. When the pot maker has made the pot, he has accomplished his job, yet the wheel rotates. Wheel goes on rotating, but it does not produce anything. So is the case with karma. You can perform karma because as a human being you cannot live without it. But it will not produce, therefore it will don't have binding effect. In the case of renunciates, it has no binding effect because they don't perform those karmas which are binding, such as this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, this is not mine. This mine and thine creates attachment. Illegal attachment according to philosophy and spirituality unauthorized attachment. That which is not yours because of charm, temptations and sense gratifications, those attachments, object of attachments, you get attached and there because of the attachment you suffer and that consumes your whole time and energy and you don't have time and you don't have awareness of attaining your goal. Those attachments are called binding attachment. They are called tishnas. There are three mainly. My wife, my children, my property. And there is another fourth. This is me, greater than others. I am this and I am this and I am this. Putreshana, Vitreshana. You see. Location. Everyone should respect me. This is my home, this is my children, this is my property. When someone renounces all these three Tishnas, he is free. There is nothing that is binding to him. 
That is why he is called renunciate. What does he renounce? He does not renounce breathing. He does not renounce going to... Uh, when he does his ablutions, he renounces. Those karmas which bind him, which create a snare, network, which create attachment for him, which create bondage for him. Therefore, first freedom they receive when they renounce, after renouncing the karma, those karmas which are binding karmas. Is it clear now? Yes. Darkness will give you only darkness. Light will give you only light. Now, you cannot compromise here. There is no compromise between darkness and light. Darkness is... What is darkness? Darkness has no existence of its own, while light has existence. This is the difference. Then how do we see darkness? Lack of light is darkness. What is ignorance? Actually does not exist. Its existence is found for lack of awareness. So Maya is exactly like that. I am going to explain to you Maya so that you understand. Now there are two versions. Ma means that ya. Ma means no, ya means that. That which does not exist yet apparently exists like miraz in the desert. It does not exist, but you see, you feel it, you see. You can meet an accident. It can create disaster. It cannot enlighten you. Another say, Ma means this, Ya means that. Maya is Shakti of the Brahman, and they are inseparable. Why do you condemn Maya? Why do you say Maya? Money is not Maya, wealth is not Maya, you see, woman is not Maya, man is not Maya, there is nothing like that is called Maya. It's the ignorance created by your attachment that becomes Maya. When it is used, for individual it is called avidya. When it is used for the cosmic, it is called maya. They are one and the same. In relation to one individual, it is called avidya. In relation to the universe, it is called maya. Remember this. An individual suffers not because of maya, because of avidya. Whole universe is not aware. We human beings are not aware. We creatures are not aware of the reality because of Maya. In collective sense, you use word Maya. In specific sense, you use Avidya. Now, let me describe. Why do you see this one absolute truth as many? Why there is duality? There is. There is duality. But this is only in a relative term, relative world. With this simile, with this illustration, we will find out why there is so much difference. What is that absolute truth and what is that jivatma? What is paramatma? What is jivatma? Why one has become many? Why this vivarta? Why this difference with this simile? There is ocean full of water. Water, water everywhere. On the top of that ocean, there is one sheet, thick layer of ice. It is not thick layer of rocks. 
आइस वट इज आइस आइस इज अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ वॉटर ओशन इज ब्राह्मण एंड देर इज वन थिक लेयर ऑफ आइस ऑन दैट थिक लेयर देर आर ट्रिलियंस ऑफ होल्स वी ऑल इंडिविजुअल्स एंड क्रीचर्स आर लाइक होल्स द शीट ऑफ आइस इज लाइक माया एंड द ओशन इज लाइक ब्राह्मण नो पुट द क्वेश्चन अबाउट इट when you see the hole you see the water now what happens when maya then when that ice melts the shape and color shape of the holes also change when all holes disappear maya disappears individuality disappears brahman alone finally exists which was there in the beginning this is the difference between individual soul maya and brahman you should understand what maya is the akasha the space that you see is not the space i am seeing through window because of the window because of my limited vision i say this is window because of my limited understanding i say inside the space inside the cup is very small because of my limited knowledge i say space in this room is very little when i get out of this i find horizon is large limitless it depends from where which angle and how you see things this is my point are you seeing or knowing things through your senses it will look different when you see things through your mind they will look different but when you see things from the fourth state when you have attained turiya then you see sleeping dreaming and waking all three the whole valley of life as long as you have not attained that height and summit you will be confused you live in the dualistic world i am jiva and brahman is different from me now this mundak chapter 3 can to 1 explains if you learn if you study carefully there will be no confusion confusion comes from the mind confusion does not come from the source you see either you have not purified your mind and you have not sharpened your mind mind means intellect you have four aspects of mind i thought these people have explained it manas chitta buddhi and ahankara by knowing these four aspects you know your mind in entirety for the sake of training for the sake of analysis according to yoga science it helps in knowing yourself and preparing yourself as a good student to study the wisdom of upanishad to practice it now for some time imagine that this is a big factory human being is like that in this factory the role of manas what is called mind Ma- the word man is sanskrit word It has been borrowed by english and latin as man m a n m a n man who thinks a human being is he who thinks 
Animals cannot think. They have brain, but they cannot think. They have no capacity to think and narrate the way we human beings have. This is the difference. That's why like I say human being is thinking animal. Manas is that aspect of the factory which has got authority to export and to import. To listen what you say, to see what you, what others are doing, to observe, and to assimilate both. Very important part, Manas. It was both ways, inside and outside. Bayamukhi, Antarmukhi. It creates a very, it has got a very serious problem. Sankalpa and Vikalpa, shall I do it or not? Shall I do it or not? Whenever any such thing, doubt comes in your mind, it is the nature of manas. But if you are in touch with your manager, who has got power, CPA, Buddhi, why is it called CPA? All the time Buddhi has three powers. Three aspects to discriminate, it knows what is right and what is wrong. One, it judges, it has power to judge. And it has power to remain aloof at the same time. Buddhi. If Manas in, never consults Buddhi, what will happen to the factory? Sooner or later, factory, there will be disaster in the factory. There is another point. This finance controller of this factory is Buddhi. It goes on telling Ahankara, who is the chief manager, that from the reserve, Chitta, which is the whole balance of our system. We don't have so much money, don't spend. You are overspending. You are not earning. The factory is not doing good. It is not accomplishing. There is no coordination. There is no tranquility. There is no equanimity. It constantly tells, but Manas, if does not listen to Buddhi, does not listen to Hankara, does not listen to Chitta, what will happen? the factory will be disorganized. You see. Ahankara is that something which separates you from the whole. That makes you Jeevatma. You are Atma or light. You are Pramatma or light. But there is someone that separates you from the whole. So qualitatively you have same qualities. But they are not sufficient. Quantitatively, you are not Pramatma. So, Ahankara means that limits you, separates you. Here, Buddhi in the Western Hemisphere is taken in a different way. Intellect. But it's more than intellect. You know. Chitta is the whole reservoir of memory, knowledge and everything. Received from the Atman. So this is your inside being. If there is no coordination with the help of discipline, spiritual discipline, you teach your manas to be to coordinate with the buddhi, ahankara and chitta. All they coordinate. Then the factory runs well. If it doesn't, you will be always confused. You will not understand things as they are. The confusion comes because you are not understanding things, you are not seeing things as they are. You are seeing things partially. You are seeing only one part of it. You do not see the other side of it. 
you should be able to attain a position where you see everything in its totality. When you know all these four aspects of yours, then you know your internal states well. The confusion arises because they are not trained. Buddhi is not trained. Nobody listens to Buddhi. A manas does not listen. So Buddhi says, okay. If a learner teacher does not teach, what will happen? After some time he will forget what he has learned. He will become lazy. He will become selfish. He will become inert. And he will be a bad teacher. So it's the case for the students, you see. All confusion comes for lack of coordination, lack of understanding in these four aspects. If one of my fingers says, I don't want to listen to you, my one finger wants to hold something, this finger says, I don't agree with you. This also says, I don't agree with you. This also says, I don't agree with you. What will happen? I cannot hold the part. There should be complete coordination with the help of discipline we can practice and with that practice we can do that. There should be consultation all the time. Fixed hours should be kept for consultation where the four sit together, have a dialogue. That is called internal dialogue. That is why Vedanta or science of Upanishad says, let you learn a dialogue which is called internal. You talk of meditation, meditation, without understanding what you are doing, sit down, close your eyes, then hallucinate, and next day say bad words to your teacher. He does nothing, he has not taught me anything. Internal dialogue means, let you learn to understand how your mind functions. And there are solutions received from buddhi. Ankara, who is representative of the proprietor, he has totally neglected proprietor, he has become dishonest. Ankara. He separates this whole factory of life from the proprietor. You see? Proprietor is seated behind in the chariot. Ankara is driving. Buddhi controlling the rain, and there are other senses, horse, and they are going here and there, they are not going on the path. Plato also borrowed this idea from the Upanishad, Katha Upanishad. Here, two identical words. that are constant companion. Instead of saying constant companion, I will say twin laws of life. Perch in the same tree. Now, we are not talking of the cosmos at present. We are talking about the human being, human body. Human body, human being is Nucleus, miniature universe. As scientist goes to his lab, study a small particle of the arsenic and gives all conclusive statements about the quality of the arsenic. So in the case, if you study this human being, this body, human life completely with all its Intern internal states, pranic force, and the real prana, I told you. So far you have been studying prana, only the breath and its vehicle. Real prana is beyond even mind, first unit of life. So, a scientist, you are a scientist, you are trying to explore your origin, you are trying to understand what you are, how you have come to this world, why you have come to this world, what is the purpose of your life. You have many, you have, all your questions are summed up in four questions. No matter how many questions you do. 
all questions that you can form can be in four categories. From where have you come? Why have you come? What is the purpose of your coming? And where will you go from here? You cannot form a fifth question excluding these four categories. And the answers are simple. From where a spark comes, it comes from the fire. From where rain comes, it comes from the ocean. You see? Now, it has many, it changes in many forms. The water of the ocean evaporates, it becomes clouds, cloud becomes rain. If rain gets, you see, intense coolness, it becomes snow. But finally it melts and it becomes water. It's virtually water. It has many, it has taken many forms. All these forms are like that. So the student is told not to believe that any form is Brahman. All these forms have come from the Brahman, but absolute truth is not the form. It's beyond name and form. Every form has a name. Absolute truth, absolute Brahman is beyond name and form. In this tree of life, which is which has its root above and branches downwards as the pranas are explained. There are two birds. One bird enjoys the fruits of the tree and if you enjoy, be prepared for suffering. Enjoy mean Enjoyment means suffering too. Pleasure means pain too. My watch gives me pleasure when I wear it. If it is broken, it will give me pain. The source of pleasure and pain is one and the same. So you find two pairs of opposite living together, pain and pleasure. One suffers, one enjoys. One bird is eating the fruits of that tree, another is looking at her. They are companion, very close to each other, identical, living on the same tree. One is called Brahman, another is called Jivatma. Individual soul suffers because of its creating limitation for your, itself. I am big and small, or I am brilliant, I am this, I am that. Go on making superimposition. Who is this making this? Your own mind. Your mind should be purified. Purified mind does not create obstacles. No matter how wonderful telescope you have, you can go from one galaxy to another with the help of that telescope, but turn that telescope towards yourself. It won't help you. The glasses which you use to read the book helps you in studies. The black, dark words. But it will, if you turn those glasses towards you, it will not show you your internal states. The way is to go beyond mind. You do not need an instrument to know Atman, to know reality, to know truth. It is self-existent the moment you have destroyed all the fetters, you have removed all the superimpositions, you have removed all the coverings of the lamp, light will be there. Just the point. You see? These two birds are identical. Identical means same. Nobody created problems with 
for this bird. This bird created problem for herself. So one is constantly eating the fruits of this tree of life, which are pleasant, which are unpleasant, which are fearful, which are so full of sorrows, you see. And another is only witnessing. Now you will see one point here. The word witnessing is very important to understand. If you learn witnessing, what do you receive from this verse for practice? As Brahma, Brahman is witness, O oh, aspirant, you should learn to witness things. What, do you, what happens when you learn to witness things? I am not body, I am not breath, I am not senses, I am not mind. And now you are witnessing. What are you there? You become seer. You see things separately from yourself. This is called witnessing. All these objects of the world are different from me. I am not these things. This is called witnessing. This is one of the steps of meditation. When the student learns to witness things, then he will see things properly. But if I am involved in something, I cannot witness. Because I assume the form, I identify myself with the object, how can I witness? For witnessing, you will have to learn this process. I am not this, I am not this, I am not this. This is called neiti, neiti. Not this, not this, not this. During practice, you feel, I am different from the Brahman, that is right. But you are identical, that's what the scriptures say. How can I do it? Practice. What to practice? Learn to purify your mind so that your mind does not come in your way. Go beyond mind, for mind or any other instrument is not helpful for the journey that goes inward, that leads you to the kingdom of Atman, to the summit of life. Once you drop all these superimpositions that I have mind, I have breast, I have senses, I have body, then mind, the soul itself, without any impositions, is free. There is no bondage, pure Atman. So one bird constantly looking at, witnessing, Another is tasting, another is suffering because of the pleasures and pains, superimpositions. So this verse explains, in this tree of life, there are two words, one is immortal, another though immortal, but because of its own superimpositions, it suffers, this is the meaning, because of the ignorance. Second verse, seated on the same tree, the deluded Purusha becomes entangled, worries helplessly. However, the moment it recognizes the glory and greatness of the bird that witnessing, it attains freedom from all pain and misery. Beautiful. So far, Jiva, my individual soul, with the help of these great guys, who are not disciplined like Ankara, it's identifying itself to this internal state instead of identifying itself to the bird which is witnessing. Brahman. Simply what she suffers because she identifies. That bird identifies herself with something, objects, external objects. She simply has to change her attitude. That's practice in Asia. There was one great sage in Punjab, his name was Bullesha. Most learned people used to visit him, he wouldn't say anything. Finally, one day what happened? 
he moved from his little cottage, holy cottage, to the quarters near the prostitute quarters, and especially near the gutter, so that nobody would come and disturb him. So he would sit down, he would sit down there. Because <laughs> a man of God, why should he care? I don't want to establish my relationship with you, hell to you. They say, who cares? Yeah, I have to see my internal states. You know. So a learned man approached. How? How did he approach? Not with arrogance. The way you have to approach your teacher according to Upanishad, you have to be humble. You don't carry money, fruits to approach, to know the truth. You have simply learned to be humble. One thing very intelligent. If you are egotistical, the ego creates barrier for you, who has separated you from the whole. How can he united you with the teacher? Not possible. First thing, to be humble. Humble means learning to have a desire, burning desire to know, first thing. Learning to listen properly. In this system, first thing you have to see, close your eyes and just listen with one-pointed mind. Not for see. No, no, no. Close your eyes and just listen. Shravanam. Then immediately don't ask question to your teacher by listening. No, no, no. You have to do manana. You have to ponder over. You have to brood over what he has said. What the scriptures say. He tells you about the scriptures. He says the script, sayings of the scriptures. The scriptures are given by the teachers, and the, finally they are apparently impersonal revelations. You are not prepared to receive revelations. Therefore, you want to learn, and teacher is giving you that flow. First, be humble. If you are arrogant, even to your father, only one son. He'll be not happy with you. Arrogance is not the way of learning things. I'll tell you one thing. I personally knew this man. There was one great magician in Punjab. But before I come to this, I first finish with Bulesha. So this learned man with humble, forgetting his pride that he has many degrees of the from the universities and this and that. He went to, says, sat down at his feet, next to him, bowing his head. Bulesa said, what do you want? What can I do for your son? Igbal beautifully says, Khudi ko kar bulan litna kihar takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud pooche bata teri raja kya hai. Iqbal, one of the poets, says, Prepare yourself so much so that Lord comes to you and asks, Say, son, what do you want from me? That is called preparation. You can prepare yourself. So here he went with full preparation according to the Upanishad, how you approach your teacher. And there he sat down. So he said, How can I find Rabba? Rabba means Lord. Lord of life, Lord of the universe. You know, beautifully he said, one sentence, small sentence, completed entire Vedas, Upanishads, Bibles of the world. Rabda ki pauna, itho torna, utho launa. It's very easy to find God. Disconnect here and connect there. <laughs> <laughs> to that bird who is eating and suffering because of the taste she is acquiring from the chance and temptations of the world. Disconnect from here and connect yourself there and you are there, you will find it. As long as you are trying to do this. So the another Persian 
यू सी पोएट से नम खुदा ख्वाही नम दुनिया दू ये ख्याल मुहलस्तों जो enjoying the fruits of the world with all the delights and then at the same time attaining brahman not possible only crazy people can think finally go and enjoy them but how long there should be some limit enjoy them see what they are once you have seen them you have analyzed them oh drop them during that time at least change yourself and look at it that's what the meaning is simply this bird has to change its attitude look towards a different direction this little bird who suffers she is identical and great friend to the other bird who is witnessing simply she has to look at it how is she witnessing how is she not how is she free why am i in the bondage simply she has to be aware of this she is not aware of that and she is identifying herself with the world and objects that's why she is suffering when the aspirant realizes purusha I told you, Purusha means what? Pur means city of life. Sa means that sleeping. That who is sleeping in the city of life, that center of consciousness from where consciousness flows on various degrees and grades. If you want to go there, you see. If you want to awaken that sleeping force in you. you should learn you have to go through certain tapas certain spiritual disciplines and once purusha awakens realizes the consciousness which is self effulgent light has not given by any source this light is being given to us by the lamps purusha has no light no lamp has given me sight to see these lights sun moon stars i have not borrowed that you have not borrowed the light of seeing understanding things from any quarter it is with you it is yours who has given you that light of understanding light of seeing light of touching light of feeling light of smelling who has given you this <coughs> आत्मयोर आत्मा इट इज विद इन यू द मोमेंट यू आर अवेयर ऑफ द ट्रू फोर्स बिहाइंड ऑल एक्शन द लो लॉर्ड एंड सोर्स ऑफ नॉलेज देन सच ए वाइज सीकर वाइज सीकर नॉट वाइज बट वाइज सीकर ए सीकर शुड बी वाइज इन अफ not to deviate his not to go away from his path this is why seeker washes off the sanskaras who disturbs in your meditation i don't i am not there even your husband wife and children don't want to they pray okay mother we will keep quiet will not create any noise your husband says honey okay sit down in meditation and then you there you get disgusted and you hallucinate who troubles you your own sanskaras you store all your impressions of deed and impressions of this life in the reservoir inside you in the unconscious when you learn to relax try to control withdraw your senses voluntarily from the world then turmoil comes all the suppressions and depressions come forward because of the sanskaras and there are in many layers of several lifetimes of this lifetime and many lifetimes if you don't believe in lifetimes in this lifetimes there are many such impressions they come forward and disturb 
So what happening? I see you, I am not disturbed. No, but I am closing my eyes and meditating, and if I see you, it will be disturbance. Look at the difference. So many people say, what is the use of meditation? When I open my eyes, I am not disturbed, but when I close my eyes, I see everybody that disturbs me. Sanskaras, impressions you store. How to deal with those impressions? This is a subject matter I have reserved for the whole process of Upanishadic meditation in which we include prayer, contemplation and meditation together. Such a wise seeker washes off the sanskaras of all vir virtuous and non-virtuous deeds, both. You think virtuous deeds are helpful to you? No. They also consume your mind. Time. Both, finally, you will have to drop them both. The best of the very finest boat you have in the world. Very costly boat. Wonderful with all the appliances, with all the luxuries. But when you cross the ocean, what do you do with the boat? Do you carry boat with you? No. You have to drop it there. Best of the enjoyments and their objects we have, we will have to drop them sooner or later. When we go to the when we have the journey of the unknown. You see. In the journey, remember one thing. Swami Rama had many things in India. But when he came on a journey, he did not carry many things because if he carried all the things he had, he would be a donkey. You see. Who finds delight in his own burden. You see. Donkey cries if you do not put enough load on its back. Unless. So here, when you are on journey, why do you want to become donkey? Why do you want to carry load and then go on journey? Even modern principle, you go to Europe, you go to the world tour, what do you, you don't carry many things. Less things, enough wealth with you. That's principle. So that you travel light, but you are sound within. When you are on journey, why do you forget that you are on journey? Then your journey is going through a huge crowded street. You should be well prepared to receive kicks and blows from others. They are not kicking you and giving you blows knowingly. Nobody at home, from home, leaves for the office to fight with the boss and others. But it happens because of ego troubles. Yet you should find out your way to the freedom. You see. If you are a wise seeker, you will not have many, many useless things which consume your time and energy. That's the point. Now, here again same thing. According to Upanishads, your two breaths are not considered prana. Remember this. Prana means energy. This is okay. These two breaths and other sub-vehicles which we will describe they are not pranas, they carry pranas. What for? To offer as oblation to the first unit prana that is already within you. Where are you going? Finally you are going to come home. No matter where you go, any activity you do, what for you do, in the end where do you go? Home. What do you do there? Eat and then sleep. Rest. No matter where you go, finally you go to your ultimate reality, that is your home, 
to take the final rest that is called happiness and bliss. You see. So here I told you pranas. According to the Upanishadic literature, prana means the first unit of life. When the time is over, let me know, okay? I have told you, you are not separated from the whole. You, because of your own ignorance, created by your own self, you are suffering. God is not responsible. So if you think prayer will help you, Upanishads say no. Mere prayers will not. Prayer will give you energy and strength. That's right. Prayer will help you to make you strong to go through this jungle, to go through this tropical forest which is very dense. Karma will never help you. It will create a path for you. Who is going to help you? Knowledge. You should have that profound knowledge, anatomy of human life. The anatomy of human life is, from this vast universe, from the sun a ray comes. From the Brahman comes light. That light is called prana, the first unit. But that comes through what? That which is called individual soul. We are talking about the individuality, anatomy of human life. This is like a wave in the vast ocean of the universe that rises, that plays and settles there. Nothing happens. Nobody dies. Nobody is born. Wise man never thinks that he was ever born and he will ever die. Birth and death are two plays, little plays, for that wave in the vast ocean which is mother of the human being. You see. This first unit. This, in English literature, in Western literature, this is called silver cord. One of the Upanishads called is Deva Atma Shakti. Deva, individual Deva Atma Shakti. This is called Kundalini. It's in its dormant form at present. We have to awaken her. You cannot awaken somebody, somebody you are here and you are awakening somebody in India or Japan. You have to be there. You have to know the process. Then from this project, your unconscious mind, conscious mind, and there's these two breaths, live breaths, then body. This is a spiritual anatomy of human being. These two birds as a tree, in the tree of life, one is, this is a, just to make you understand, you see. One remains totally unaffected by the external turmoil, other suffers because of the attachments, this is the gist. The gist of Gita, I say, the gist of Patanjali, the codifier of yoga sciences, abhyas vairagya abhyam tan nirodaha. To have perfect control over the various functions of mind, modifications of mind, you need to have abhyas, practice, constant practice. And learn to practice vairagya also, detachment also. You get confused with the two words. Swami, 
How can we live without love? Why do you say I should be detached from my husband? No, no, I am telling you to be one with your husband. Love is different from detachment. Detachment and love are one and the same. You are misunderstanding this. I am trying to unite you. Upanishad philosophy says you are already separated. Upanishadic philosophy says, I am trying to unite you, I am trying to you to understand one reality beneath all these diversity, this diversity. Non-attachment means love. Attachment means misery. You have seen how your husband gets jealous when you have a child. Because you don't pay attention to him so much as you pay attention towards the children. And some later on a time comes when wife who adored her husband so much, loved her husband so much, loves her child more than her husband. This is truth. Attachment. Attachment brings misery. If I say, son died, nobody is going to cry. No one is crying. But if I say, my son died, I start crying. My attachment. Attachment is mother of all miseries. Unauthorized proprietorship is called attachment. Trying to own providence, gift, in very illegal, unauthorized way is called attachment. And what is love? Love means we are separated, we are trying to become one with the reality that is love. It is attitude actually. If you have right attitude, then your relationship is wonderful. If you do not have right attitude, and if you start growing that I and me and mine, then you are doomed. So Upanishad say, no attachment. Gita says, no attachment. Learn to grow love in love, but not attachment. Attachment is misery. Okay. Knowing the truth that it is prana that shines through all living beings. Now, what is shine in all living beings? This, we are, Upanishad talks about this prana, not the breath. Vast difference. You see. For the aspirants, I will prescribe two books. Dhyaneshwari, Jnaneshwari by Sant Gyaneshwar, and there is one commentary, totally on yogi commentary, by Kalipad Guha, who was disciple of Lahiri Mahasaya. These two extensive works help the students to understand. There is another book who has written three books, Yogi Guru, Tantric Guru, Vedanta Guru. There are three books. He writes his experiences with his Yogi Guru. He writes his experiences with his Tantra Guru. He writes experiences with his Upanishad Guru. Knowing the truth that it is prana that shines through all living beings, he realized yogi takes no interest in, in, what is written? Pedantic discussions and debates. He will not waste time in talking uselessly. In ego trips, that's the point. I am not understanding something, I am trying to force my ideas. No, this is truth. 
If you are convinced this is true, then why are you asking me? No reply. Just see. Those who find delight in Atman and meditation, they don't have time for useless, useless gossiping. Great time we spend in useless gossiping. Look at the time we waste. One lifetime is not much. If it is hundred years so span of time, according to Upanishad, fifty years you sleep. From fifty years, twenty-five years you stay in bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, taking bath, one morning ablutions, uh, you see painting your faces, wearing clothes. Another twenty-five years in gossiping, talking about others. Those who gossip, you know what, what is the defect into the, in that person? Gossiping, who take delight in gossiping? He is drunken. If you see a drunken person and he is nude, he is not aware of himself. But if somebody nude comes before him, someone says, hey, you are nude. <laughs> His whole mind becomes, he becomes extrovert. Don't waste your time. It doesn't help. The seekers find delight in talking about Brahman, knowing about Brahman, meditating on the Brahman, they enjoy that state. This Atman can be experienced through constant practice of truth, constant practice of love. According to yoga science, Love comes first and truth comes afterwards. How to practice love, yoga science tells you. Ainsa satya pratisthayam. Ainsa satya asya brahmacharya. Ainsa first. Satya comes later on, truth comes later on. A means no, insa means injuring, killing, hurting, harming. If you love somebody, you don't injure, hurt, harm or injure him, that person. Otherwise, you don't love. Something you must be doing but not loving. These are the expressions of love. For loving somebody, you don't hurt, harm or injure anyone. That's it. What is constant practice of truth can be enjoyed once you learn how to love. In love you give without conditions. You don't expect. These days in our modern society we expect, both expect. So woman expects too much from man, man expects too much from woman. And that expectation is called love. That's not true, it says. Practice of truth, tapas, right knowledge, and brahmacharya. Practice of truth means leading your speech according to the facts, expressing through your speech according to the facts you know. Tapas, guiding, learning to guide your senses. Tapas here means, tapas has many meanings. Tapas means fire, heat. There is a very dangerous heat coming out of our senses, learning to direct it properly. That's called tapas. Brahmacharya, it has two meanings. Brahmacharya means celibacy. You see. For monastic order, celibacy is good. Because there are no women, there are no men. You see. That will be treacherous thinking. 
If somebody has become Swami and thinks of a woman all the time in the monastery, it means he is in the world. That's why it is said, it will consume, waste your time and energy. Brahmacharya means something higher than this. Brahma means the absolute truth. Charya means one who walks in the Brahman consciousness. If you are celibate, physically you are not meeting, men and women do not meet, but they think of each other, that's not called brahmacharya. Mithya achari sauchate, that's very bad, worse than doing things. Most of the self-righteous people do that. Fanatics do that. You see, I am celibate. They are puffed up with their pride for thinking of the women all the time. Yogi is devoid of all impurities. See this self element right light within this very body. Those who understand something about Devatma Shakti, the direct light coming from the kingdom of Lord within, by awakening this light, by awakening this purusha, sleeping there, they purify themselves, get rid of all the saskaras, and be free. First attainment is freedom from the bondage of karma by doing selfless work. Second freedom, freedom from the saskaras which motivate you to do good, bad, all sorts of actions. <coughs> truth alone wins because truth alone exists, never untruth. A patch of cloud can hide sun for some time, but actually sun is not hidden, it's your vision. You think the sun is hidden by the patch of cloud. No, 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 it's your vision. Your vision is limited. You see, untruth never helps. The path leading to the divine is paved by the truth. Truth is only the torch-bearer to lead you on the path of divinity. By following this path, the seers who are free from all desires attain the highest abode of truth. First you have to learn to be seer, to witness, like the other bird in the tree, on the tree, and then you have to learn to wash off all your sanskaras. Then you should learn three things. Learning to perform your actions so that actions do not create binding effect, binding something for you. You should wash off all your sanskaras so that they don't disturb you in your meditation. You see, and you should learn to be Brahman awareness. These three things you have learned today. It is infinite divine in describable and is subtler than the subtlest. No matter how subtle you understand, after all, whatever you understand, you understand through your mind. No matter how subtle you can go, divine is subtler than that subtle. So it can never be attained through your mind. You should, you have to go beyond mind. It is further than the f furthest yet to those who see it. It is very close, residing in the cave of the heart. Residing within you. Heart means center. Heart does not mean this particular heart. Residing here. Yeah. Center, from where entire human life is conducted. This is called heart, not this heart. So don't be confused. Where is the heart of the United States? Washington, D.C. From where it is being controlled. Heart here means, this is a cave where the Brahman is seated. With the help of meditation, you can know it. It cannot be seen with eyes, nor described with speech. 
It cannot be known through the senses or achieved through austerities or rituals and ceremonies. No action is capable of leading you to the knowledge. And without knowledge you cannot know Brahman. When as a result of knowledge, his mind is purified, the seeker's mind, and calm, the yogi meditating on the Absolute attains the direct experience. Now, there is some wonderful hint in it. All the experiences you have, why you and me all are not satisfied? Christ never lied. Whatever is written in the Bible, it's not lie. Then why do you not believe it and be free? Christ was fully realized, Son of God, and Bible talks about God, Jewish Bible talks about God, Hindu Bible talks about why are we not satisfied about it? Human mind is not satisfied. Human mind will be satisfied when human mind will be plunged into direct experience. Therefore, every individual should have direct experience. Direct experience alone can help you. That's why the other day I said, Ye light thy own lamp, no one will give you salvation. Direct experience alone is helpful. Direct experience will make you seer, will teach you how to witness will teach you how not to get involved, you see. Have, all of us need direct experience. When mind is purified and calm, yogi meditates on the Absolute and then receives direct experience. This extremely subtle Atman Residing in the cave of the heart can be known through pure intelligence. Another point they said. If you cannot do meditation and if you are not doing meditation, then you should go another path that is called path of jhana. It's like sharp of the edge of razor. It's like walking on the razor edge. It will cut. So it is not meant for everyone. Everyone is not prepared for that. When you have learned to sharpen your buddhi, then your mind comes under your control very easily. But very difficult to sharpen that buddhi to that extent where you have pure intelligence. Prana has entered this body in five forms. <coughs> now, the first unit is already there. Now, prana, here, the seer is talking about prana. Five vehicles. He is talking about, now this time, the meaning changes. Five vehicles. First you have two vehicles. One vehicle is busy in cleansing the city of life, another is busy in supplying the pranas. Breath is not prana. It's like horse. You see, in Vedic period, I told you all the teachings are in, with symbols. <coughs> Ashwamedha Yajna. One of the highest yajnas ceremonies was Ashwamedha, Asham horse. When somebody performed the yajna, he would leave the horse. And anybody who could catch hold of that horse, he had to fight with him for his superiority. <laughs> what does it mean? Aswa means, why only horse? Why not a buffalo? Why not elephant? Why not dog? Aswa? Asu means prana. But actually, Asu itself is also not prana. From our experience and from other literature we gathered. Gita tells you, who is wise man? What is the definition of wise man? Not one who has learned many languages. 
many books, acquired many degrees. No. Asocha nanna sochastum pragya vajanch vasthi gata sun gata sunche nana sochanti pandita. Gata su and gata su, there are two types of beings. Those who have dropped their bodies, those who do not have bodies, those who are considered to be dead, and those who are already living. Why is he who has knowledge of both, this side and that side? Another meaning. Why is he who has knowledge of this shore and other shore? Avidya and Vidya both. Lower knowledge and higher knowledge both. Let your lower knowledge be used to be comfortable in the world. Let higher knowledge be used for attaining truth. This extremely subtle Atman residing in the cave of the heart can be known through pure intelligence too. Pure intelligence comes when you have heard enough scriptures from your Guru, who has been taught, trained by his Guru, Guru lineage. Then you start thinking. After thinking you come to conclusion, then you start contemplating. When you start contemplating and when your contemplation is strengthened, then that is called, last is called Shakshatkara. You start seeing the reality in truth. That experience we are talking here. Along with prana, mind pervades the whole body of living beings. Then you understand the mystery of one and all. When this body, mind, organization is purified, this Atman shines forth. In purifying at tapas, how gold shines. Put gold in the fire, it will shine. You see. You don't see your own face in your mirror if it is unclean, if it is enveloped with the dust. Clean the mirror, see your face, it will tell you who you are, what your face looks like. Purity of mind, pure mind means to relieve, to wash off all the impurities of mind through tapas, through the practices, the spiritual practices. A person with a purified mind can attain any plane of experience. There are many planes of experiences or any object of desire. For attaining any object in the world, you need one-pointed mind. And only pure mind can attain one-pointedness. One Therefore, anyone desiring to be prosperous should honor and serve the knower of Atman. Now, here it says, says, how will you know the technique? You should you will meet a person, a guru, a teacher, who has learned from his teacher, from lineage. Honor him with your humility and learn from him how to control your mind. So, tomorrow we'll have next lesson.